Hello together, welcome back to a new episode of the Wing Stubby Workshop. Today at this tutorial we will talk about the questions that you collected during the last three parts of the Wing Stubby Workshop and we will also take a focus to the questions which I didn't answer detailed enough in the last three parts of the workshop. So have fun! In the last three parts I also had a fun cup and chi for the explaining of the Wing Stubby functions. Before we get to the questions, here are a few sides how the model flies. So like you have seen in this video, the Fun Cup and she is a real cool aircraft to get to know the Wing Stubby better. So let's get a look on the main topic of today. The first point is a connection of an external receiver to the Wing Stubby and the connection of the power supply to the Wing Stubby. Point 2 is a detailed look on the trimmings. Point 3 is the Wing Stubby control of a multi-flap ring. Point 4 are the different possibilities of the steering of your flaps. And point 5 is the assistant at the Wing Stubby Classic system and the including templates. So how do you connect your servos and your power supply to your Wing Stubby? Like you've seen in this picture, all servos are connected with the Wing Stubby. You also have to connect your external power supply to your Wing Stubby. You will have to connect your external receiver with the in-port of the Wing Stubby. So that means that the serial servo signal is connected with the Wing Stubby by this wire. Your external receiver gets also the power supply within this wire. This is the reason it's useful to put all your servo leads direct to the Wing Stubby. Otherwise the whole current of all your servos would go through this one wire it's also no problem if you have some servos that you don't want controlled by the Stabby system. The next point is how we set our external receiver at the Wing Stabby menu. After we have connected our receiver with the input of the Stabby and activated our serial servo signal output at our receiver, then we have to click to the menu point receiver and then to receiver type and then we can choose between the different transmission protocols of the BRAD users. So which one is the right wheel for you, you'll find on your instruction manual of your receiver. So let's get to the next point, the trimmings at the Wing Stabby system. By the use of the Easy Control system, your Wing Stabby detects the servo positions after every turning off and returning on on the Wing Stabby system and the trimmings are set it by the Wing Stabby itself. That means you can do the trimming as you used to do before. But if you have a trimming that is very different in every flight mode, I will advise you to take the Wing Stabby Classic system. By the use of the Classic system you have two different options for your trimming. Option 1 is to do the trimming without the several trimming channels. Here your trimming settings has to be transferred manually by the trim flight mode or by your launcher or by the fast changing of the different stabby channels. If your transmitter has the option to use additional trimming channels, this is always the better option. 
Now I'll show you how you set the additional trimming channels right on your multiplex transmitter. At first I will do this at the example of my Royal SX16. So we will look at the servo monitor to understand how the trimming works. So if I trim aileron, in my case aileron is a channel 2, you will see that the trim moves the zero point out of the mid. To have a look on my servo assignment, we see that throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder are the first four channels on the assignment. To assign the additional trimming channels, you ju just have to choose the free channel, in my case channel 5, and move the, the digit scroller to the right. Here on channel 5 I will assign trimming aileron, on channel 6 I will assign trimming elevator, and on channel 7 I assign trimming rudder. So now back to the servo monitor we see that if I trim the aileron, not a channel 2 is, is moved anymore, we will see that there's the different, the additional channel, channel 5, is moving. So your wing stepping system can clearly separate if it's a steering input or if it's the trimming. So let's look what is different at the setting of the trimming channels at the Profi TX. So here I have assigned the same four channels like before in my Royal SX. In the first step I also do the assignment of the trimming channels on the three channels 5, 6 and 7, but the logic of the Profi is a little bit different. So here we look into the servo monitor. So what we can see, if we do the trimming, not just the trimming channel moves, the normal channel is also moving. To prevent this, this function, we go back to the servo assignment and choose LR1 minus trimming. The same also for the elevator and the rudder. So let's have a look on the servo monitor to check if we adjusted this correct. So if we now do the trimming of the ALO one, just the channel 5 is moving away from the midpoint. But pay attention, in this case you have different trimming channels, that means you have to look if your trim channel is moving in the right position, that means you can also move the trim channel to reverse. So now we have assigned successfully the trimming channels at our multiplex transmitter. So how do we use them at our wing stepy? That's what we look now. So to show the programming of the trimming channels in the multiplex launcher, we do it at the example of a multi-flap wing. So in our example we have a six flap wing, that means each side has one aileron, one flap and one spoiler. So which flaps are controlled by your wing stubby? Don't matter how many flaps do you have at your wing, the only functions are being controlled by the wing stubby are the rudder, the elevator and the ALO one. A wing stubby control of the spoiler or of a flap wouldn't make any technical sense. That's also the reason you have to deactivate every mixer when teaching in the wing stubby. Now you have the possibility to choose if you will do the programming of your snap flap or your butterfly with your transmitter or if you want to do it with the Wingster B. This is a real unique feature of the Wingster B compared to other gyros. If you want to program all the functions of your wing, I advise you to do just the programming of your aileron with your Wingster B. The rest, like the flaps, please do it with your transmitter like you used to do it before. If you do the programming at this way, you can use the trick with the flight mode dependent trimmings. So enough theory, let's switch direct to the multiplex launcher, to the wing stepping menu. First point is to switch to the menu point receiver. Here we see we have a lot of possibilities to do the trimming with the wing stepping. We have the trim flight, we have the trimming channels. So I could you explain now what's the trim flight mode, but if you look in the instruction manual, it starts 
at page 20, there's all about trimming. How to use the separate trimming channels, how do you use the trim flight mode or the trim flight channel, and also how do you set the trimming sets with the fast switching or the fast changing of the stabby modes. So in the next few minutes we only pay attention to the trimming channels because that's how I think a real cool feature of the Ring Stubby. It makes life much more easier if you go to the menu point aircraft in the multiplex launcher and then deactivate the flap setup. Then the next step is to go to the menu point receiver and assign the trimming channels for the elevator the rudder and the ALO one that we already assigned in the transmitter before. Now the real big life hack comes, but before you can also, because we don't use the flap setup, you can deactivate the channel 5 for the flaps. So because the flap on channel 5 is deactivated, our channel 5 is free now. What we do is next to get the servo direct to the following channels. That means we don't use a control function, we just get the servo direct without the controlling of the ring stubby functions. That means you have to switch from the receiver menu on the, in your ring stubby to the servo menu. Then you assign every servo channel you want. If you use any free servo channel, you have no programming anymore on your ring stubby. You do the programming of your flaps or your butterfly Yagi you used you to do before you get to know the wing stubby direct on your transmitter. And then you just take the servo channels and say okay servo 5 or servo 6 is my flap and you say please use it direct without any control of wing stubby. So why I am actually doing this? I think this is the best possibility to program any difficult setups. That means flaps or something else you program on your transmitter and just assign the output to your servos and just loop the channels through the wing stabby without any control. And don't matter if it's something real difficult like a six flap wing or a butterfly or something like that, you can also always use the same method. Because control, like I already said, are just the three functions, elevator, ALO1 and the rudder. And the other, all the other things don't play a role to the wing stubby. So why I am claiming that you get almost every setup with this method. So now we switch to the first menu point of the launcher, the, the device settings, and then switch from the basic to the extended options. And here on this diagram you see the signal inputs and also the servo outputs. Here you see the signal inputs with the description. We also see the servo outputs. Now like already told, I assign channel 5 and channel 11 for my new flaps. And I added the flight modes with a additional trimming. So now we are on the flight modes where the flaps are not set at. So what we can see here, the trimming of the elevator is really on high uh, and the rudder and the L1 is really neutral. So if I set my flaps to the half setted flaps, we can see that the trimming of the elevator is changing to the negative. That means with the use of the flight mode dependent trimming, I get my compensation of the negative elevator. If I set my flaps full, the compensation of the negative elevator is getting more and more. Now you can imagine that you can program your butterfly or your flaps at the same way because you always get the compensation of the negative elevator with your additional trimming channels. I hope that I could help you a little bit with this explanation. So if you are asking yourself if it could be a problem to rise up the other ones a little bit or to sync it up around the zero point, it's no problem. Because to do an offset around the zero point is for the wing stubby, no steering input. That means it has no effect on the stability control. Just an additional information, you can also read out the error code in the wing stubby launcher. So if you have no additional trimming channels at your transmitter, 
don't be angry to me because I cannot explain every possible configuration for model programming. But it's always a good option to look in the extended instruction manual. So now I want to show you the Wingstabby Assistant. Now you have to click to the Assistant button and you get following information. Set a new aircraft memory at your transmitter. No mixers are allowed as here. That means every mixer has to be deactivated. Every trimming has to be on the zero point and so on. Now you can choose between your type of aircraft and do you need flap support and do you use digital servos. The next thing is to assign the throttle. Just move the throttle stick at your transmitter and Wing Stubby is recognizing it automatically. Same thing for aileron, elevator and for the rudder. The next thing is to assign the gyro mode or the stabby mode. So the next thing is to do the calibration on your transmitter. That means the wing stabby is checking the directions and the control movements on each of your rudders. It is very important that all of the values are in the green area. That means the zero point and also the left and the right end points. This is very important that the wing stabby can work perfect. You have to repeat the calibration also for the aileron, the rudder and the elevator. So the next thing is a standard pin assignment that comes with the wing stabby. And then you have to check the correct direction movements of every of your servos. Then you have to choose your installation position. And then you have to check the effective directions of your wing stabby. So the wing stabby assistant is really helpful. So the last thing I want to show you today is the templates for the aircrafts in the wing stabby. So if you own any of these aircrafts that are shown as templates, you can just download the templates and start to fly. Notice the templates are for the Wing Stabby Classic system. And if you are looking for any useful settings for your aircraft, just scroll down the list. There are an amount of aircrafts and for example there is the Heron. If you have any glider that's similar to the Heron for example, just download it and check it out. So I know it was a lot of input for today. The Wing Stubby offers a lot of possibilities to do. And the outcome of this is also some questions. So do not despair if you are a Wing Stubby beginner. Just get step by step into the topic. If you have any further questions, write it in the comments below. Or you can also contact the Multiplex service. So I really hope you did like the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the Multiplex YouTube channel. So, see you in the next one!